Hey, this is Troy Van Horn. Welcome to Intrepid Arpeggios number four. The point of this series of lessons is to open up your ears, your fingers, and your mind to some arpeggio forms you might not be familiar with. In this lesson, I want to show you a bunch of really stretched out arpeggios that are all going to be ad nine arpeggios. Uh, these are based on ideas by Joe Satriani. He's used these forms for a long time in his playing and writing. What you have, moving diatonically through the key, just using the notes of the key. Uh, each degree, there'll be a root, five, and then a nine. There's your add nine. And then there'll just be a little chord shape on top based on the third of the degree of the scale in which you're in. Okay, sounds kind of funny, but just follow through, and here it is slowly. Did you catch the names of those chords as they went by? Seems like a science experiment gone awry or something, right? Don't get too caught up in the theory of it all. Just realize that all of these arpeggios fit within the key, in this case, G. This is a great workout for your hands, obviously, but uh, I want you also to think about how it fits against the key. Uh, if you're assuming you know your diatonic modes, you can see how each one of these shapes fits against uh, a position in that scale. And I want to throw out just a little lick right here um, based on the seventh position arpeggio, which is the B minor add flat 9 add flat 13, um, as superimposed over a B Phrygian scale, both of these coming out of the key of G. And here's this lick. This is uh, figure three. Not exactly Chuck Berry, right? As with the rest of the intrepid arpeggios, you really have to drop your wrist and keep your thumb behind the neck like so to make these reaches. Roll through these shapes, fretting each note as you play it. You can't just clamp down and let the notes ring. If you notice the way I'm picking that and the way it's notated in the transcription as well, I'm starting out with uh, all down strokes, and then as I move up the neck, I start each pattern with an upstroke. All I'm doing is basically using the momentum of the pick coming back this direction to strike the first note of the pattern before I run back through it. Keep a consistent pick angle and a smooth motion on the ascending and descending arcs of the pattern. It's not a bunch of pick, 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 pick. It's a smooth, sweeping motion. This will keep your tempo even. It will keep your tone consistent. So start slowly. Get these shapes under your fingers and get the sounds of them in your ear. And good luck applying these to your everyday playing.